Hello everybody on YouTube, it's Michael here again and this video is going to be part one of the tutorial of the Yamaha Genos 2 keyboard in which part one of the tutorial video I'll be showing you just some of the basic functions and capabilities of Genos 2. Thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoy. Okay, so before I start showing you the basic stuff of Yamaha Genos 2, um, first of all, what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to give you a little um, keyboard overlay. So, yep, here's the Yamaha Genos 2. Um, it looks almost identical to the original Genos, but when it comes to the casing, there are some minor differences. If you notice here, around from here to there, the keyboard is tilted at an extra five degrees. So therefore, the touchscreen is tilted at f five degrees more than it was in the original Genos. Which is really good because people can now see the screen better when playing the keyboard. And there are some other differences as well. Um, the secondary screen, the subscreen here, um, I've noticed that the width of it, the screen is actually, in my opinion, I think is a little bit more wider than the original Genos. Also with the um, slider knobs, the sliders and the knobs, notice that they have the LED lights. So we can do this which is really cool, as well as the, the knobs as well. Hopefully you can see, put it up like that, and then we put it down like that, which I think is really good. I'm guessing that, um, yep, yeah, Yamaha has obviously taken that idea from the Yamaha Montage synthesizers. And also with the assignable buttons, there are more assignable buttons on Genos 2 and instead of just being a plain button like the original Genos, um, they light up. See these ones light up and um, the one on the bottom right here that, that's not lighting up because there's nothing assigned to it. Um, I know you can't see on the screen here but there are three more assignable buttons next to the style control. But more about the assignable buttons i will go through the assignable buttons in more detail in the next video so yeah this is just a, a quick keyboard overlay of genos 2 um as i said it looks identical to the original genos but there are some little differences when it comes to the casing like the only difference I can think of with this the um casing is that this from here to there by the screen is tilted so that the screen is tilted an extra five degrees and also with the slider the sliders and the knobs you get the LED lights as well which I find is pretty cool. Also we have the cord looper button here. The original Genos didn't have that because Genos 1 didn't have cord looper when it was launched. That wasn't until the um, version 2 update. That's when the Genos 1 had cord looper available. Um, it was originated from the PSR SX900. The SX900 had cord looper first and then it moved on to Genos 1 with the version 2 update. Well, that, that's it with the um, keyboard overlay. Oh, and one more, one more quick thing, just another quick thing before I get started of showing the basics of this tutorial of the Genos 2. Um, the Genos 2 uses the same speaker system as the original. So the Genos 2 still uses the GNS MS-01 speaker system. So just a quick pointer for those that are thinking of selling their Genos 1 for a Genos 2, I would recommend keeping your speaker system. 
that's if you have a, um, the GNS speaker system. So just a quick pointer there. Right, that's it with the little keyboard overlay of Yamaha Genos 2. And now with the tutorial, the, the part one tutorial video in which I'll be showing you the basics of Genos 2. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be showing you on part one of the tutorial of the Yamaha Genos 2 keyboard, and that is the search and favorites. Yes, as I said earlier on, um, this tutorial video, I'm just gonna be showing you the basics, the basic functions of Genos 2. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna go through the search and functions. And also because of the camera of my phone, just thought I'd point out, I do apologize if the registration memory buttons or any other LED buttons are flickering. There is nothing wrong with the registration memory buttons. It's just the, the camera. Okay, onto the search and favorites. Um, this applies to the sounds. It also applies to the styles. And I don't think it, yeah, I don't think it applies Nope, it doesn't apply to the multipads. So we've got the sounds and styles in which we can add to our favorites. So I'm just gonna go through some categories of sounds and then I'm gonna go through some categories of styles and I am going to favorite them. Now, in order to do that, you need to hold down the sound. So let's just say CFX Ballad Mix 1. So we'll select that sound. And we need to hold down the sound. Oh, hang, hopefully you can see. I'm sorry if I've blocked the screen. Um, there we go. I'll hold that down. And hopefully you can see there, just there, there's a little, there's a, a sort of a, a yellow line by the um, image, which means that that sound has been added to the favourites. Oh, by the way, the star icon on the screen is your favourites. And now in order to unfavorite a sound, simply do, simply just do exactly what you did to add the sound to the favourite. And notice that the yellow bar on the image has now disappeared and the sound has now been unfavorited. Okay, so I'm just gonna favorite a few sounds. So we're gonna select a few in the piano category there we go, we have the, oh, sorry. Um, we have the CFX Ballad Mix 1, U1 Upright. Um, something I didn't mention on the first part, the keyboard overlay, but this, the um, Genos 2 also has the FM synthesis. As you can see here, we do have some DX7 presets on here, which sounds exactly like a proper DX7. So we got here toy, toy Piano DX7. I'm just gonna add that to favorites. So there's some pianos. And now we're gonna select some E-Piano. Um, let's just select one. How about the most famous sound of the DX7, the E-Piano one? We're gonna add that to favorites. There we go, select that, there we go. There you go, sounds like a DX7. Although the difference is, as you can hear, we've got reverb and delay, which was non-existent on the DX7. Okay, moving on. Um, or how about uh, 70s ambience EP? Okay, so I've, I'm gonna move on. Uh, we're gonna move on to uh, organ. Let's see here, like whiter bars, this one. Hopefully you can see that the, the second one. Uh, we're going to select the concert organ. Okay, we're gonna hold down that and favorite that. I do hope you can see the, the yellow bar. I do apologize. I don't mean to block the screen of anything. Okay, oh, there we go, we can do this up. There we go, up there. We're gonna do um, accordion. We're gonna do a few of them, harmonica. There you go. It's better doing it like that than 
that way. Okay, <laughs> all right, uh, how about a few string sounds? How about uh, super articulation kino strings? Uh, we're gonna move on some other sounds. Let's have a look. I'm just adding things to favorites here, just to give you an example. How about uh, strings DX7? There we go, and notice that the yellow bar next to the image because I've added it to favorites. Okay, I'm gonna do um, a couple more categories to show the example of adding to favorites. Like how about uh, super articulation, the concert guitar? Um, how about we do um, resonator, um, blues amp, for example? And now that sound is added to the favourites. And now let's move on. Uh, we move on. Let's go to... Um, let's go to bass because there's some really good bass sounds on here. Really good bass sounds on Genos 2. Uh, let's do E bass, electric bass, rock one. Uh, sorry, bass, I mean bass. <laughs> Bass. I'm referring to the sea fish. <laughs> okay. Um, um, we should do some more. How about some acoustic bass? There you go. I said it right this time. Okay. Okay. And one more. Uh, we're going to do um, the DX7 bass. There we go. So that's how you add sounds to your favourites. So all of the sounds that I have favourited is now added in the favourites icon. So I've got a few pianos, um, electric pianos. I've got a couple of organ sounds, uh, accordion, strings, guitar, and bass. So these sounds have been added to, added to my favourites. You can, as well as going to the presets and unfavouriting them on there, but you can also unfavourite them on the um, favourites icon. So let's just take this one, hold that down. Oh, sorry. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because it's, I'll do that. Concert guitar, hold it down. It's no longer there. Or super articulation, uh, rockabilly finger, acoustic bass. We'll hold that down. It's disappeared from the favourites. So that's how you favourite and unfavourite things. Okay, we're going to move on now. Um, out of the favourites and back into, uh, let's go back to piano. Uh, so there's, there's some sounds that are favourited. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to show you is as well as the favorites, I've already showed you that. I'm going to be showing the, oh, sorry. Almost slipped my mind. Okay, so favorites can be selected as styles as well. So let's just take this one, for instance, that one to do a couple in the, um, um, this one. And let's go to retro pop. Let's take this one. Oh, let's take this one. You just hold them down to add to favourites. Um, go to, let's say, dance, uh, folktronica. Uh, let's take another one, jump dance. Add those to favourites. Um, let's take um, uh, movie and show. One more example. Like, I'm going to do one more category. Uh, we're going to do this one. Hold it down. Add to favourites. All of the styles that I have selected as my favourites, they are now added on to the favourites. So I'll show you a few. Or this one. Or this one. So that's how you add sounds and styles to favourites. Okay, now moving on. Um, I'm now going to show you the search icon so that you, if there's any, like a certain sound that you can't seem to find, you just go to the search bar 
Um, so let me just um, show you a few examples. So let's. Um, oh, and by the way, this is voice search. So let's say I type in 80s and go to OK. Any sounds that will come up. There we go. All the sounds that has 80s on it. They're all on there. Uh, let me just do a couple more examples. Um, let's just take, say, um, brass, for instance. So we type in brass, press OK, and all of the brass sounds are on there. Also notice it says the number of search results has exceeded the, the limit. So let's have a look. So up to 100 sounds, up to 100 sounds can be chosen as on a search bar. So there are more than 100 brass sounds. So it doesn't show me all of them because only a 100 maximum can be shown. Okay, now moving on. One more example. Oh, um, I was meant to clear that. Um, okay, so here's the big thing. So what about if I type in, say, DX7? DX7, okay. And there we go. We have all the DX7 presets built in on the Genos 2. There are all together. Well, there are actually 63 DX7 presets on Genos 2, but since I have the Genos, um, the DX7 expansion pack, I basically got all of the original presets that came with the DX7. But more about the expansion packs, um, probably not in the next video, but the video after that. Okay, so that's how you um, do the search bar on the voices. And now we move on to the styles. Let's get out of that. Let's go back to that one. Okay, the search bar with the styles this time. So let's just say, for example, um, let me just think of a word. Um, again, 80s. If we type in 80s. And then everything 80s will be on there. Anything that starts with that has the yeah, 80s, 80s. Okay, um, a couple more examples. Um, how about we um, type in soul, for instance? And there you go. Any styles that has the word soul on it will be selected. Okay, one more example with the search bar or the search menu. Uh, one more example. Let's just think of a word. Um, it doesn't matter what it is, um, just anything. How about, um, let me just think for a, se a second. How about funk? We type in funk on the, there we go. So very simple stuff, really. But if there's a sound or style that you that you can't find, just simply go onto the search menu and type in a word like like I did, like 80s or soul, funk. OK, let's just one more example. Um, let's just type in let's type in ballad. And there you go. All the styles that have ballad on it. And as you can see, the number of search results have exceeded. So there's more than 100 styles with the word ballad on it. So there you go. And that is the favorites and search. So you can add sounds and styles to favorites. And you can call up the search menu to search for certain sounds and certain styles as I have shown on this example here. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you, a very quick and simple one. It's really good that the Genos 2 has this feature, but 
when you're using the sliders to change volume, the good thing is that um, with the volumes here, hopefully you can see on the screen here the volumes of that, um, that the slider, when you use it, doesn't jump to that volume. So I'll show you. Here we go. So right now I'm moving the slider and notice this is the slider for the style. Notice how the slider doesn't jump to the maximum volume. It only goes down when I put it down. So hopefully you can see the style icon there. It will go down. There we go. So that's really amazing how the sliders doesn't jump to a volume. OK, so I've got a style selected. I'm going to, there we go, change the one touch settings. OK. The right is 90, but I use this and it doesn't jump to the, like, they're on the top right now, so it doesn't jump to that volume. The volume will only change when I put the slider down to 90, then it will start going down, as you can hopefully see. OK. Now let's see if I put the, the volume, the, the slider down. I'm going to select that again. And notice it's down and not up. Let's have a look. See, look, notice it doesn't jump to the volume like it like it's turned down. Right, 90. So look, there we go. The volume isn't jumping. It isn't until I put it right up that the volume will start to take place. So it's really amazing. I know that the Korg PA5X has this, where when you use the sliders, it doesn't, like if the, if the volume is like there, for instance, and the slider is up there, like when you move it, it doesn't jump to the top volume or vice versa if you have it down. OK, let's go to another one touch setting, but I think, you know, already, uh, yeah, multi-pad. Yep, yeah. until I go down like that and up and left. Doesn't jump to the top volume. I know that when with the original Genos, if the volume was like there and I and the um, sliders are on top, um, it will jump to like the top volume. Or if it was down there, it would jump to the lowest volume. So it's really amazing how Genos 2 doesn't have that problem. Where you, you slide the, um, the slider and it doesn't jump the volume, whether you have it up or whether you have it down. So let's just show another exa um, example again. There we go. The slider doesn't jump to the um, like low volume or high volume. That isn't until you get it to the right volume that it will start to change. There we go. So, yeah, very interesting stuff. How the Genus 2 sliders doesn't jump to that volume if you have it up or down. If you have the slider up or down. Okay, so, so there you have it. And that's just a quick pointer that the Genus 2 doesn't jump the volume when you're using the sliders. It will only have the volume up and down if you have it exactly to as I showed you. Should, so it's just a quick pointer of the um, slider doesn't, doesn't jump the volume if you have the slider up or down. OK, so the next thing that I'm going to show you, another quick thing, and that is the direct access panel reset. So what that does, that it resets the keyboard without having to turn the keyboard's power off. So usually if you want to reset the keyboard, you just turn off the keyboard and turn it back on again. Uh, I've no noticed that I've got different sounds. Let's just do a different style. There we go. And if you want the keyboard to reset back to 
how it is when you turn on the keyboard. Simply press the direct access button here. It will come up with a menu and then we we tap panel reset. Do you want to execute panel reset? So that basically resets the keyboard without turning off the keyboard. This is convenient for restoring sound when there is no sound, even when playing, restoring various settings regarding voices, styles and MIDI, etc. Creating new settings for registration memory. But also, um, just a quick pointer, before you go to the next step, which is to reset, make sure that if you've created styles or created registration memories, songs, etc., make sure you save them before you tap reset because anything that you created that you haven't saved will be lost. So once you're happy, just we just press reset and notice everything will change. There you go, back to the piano, um, the E piano, the guitar and this. So it's back to the way it was, like when you turn on the keyboard, you power it on, power it off, it just resets it. So there you go. And that is the direct access panel reset, where you can reset the keyboard without having to power it off and then back on again. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is the LED brightness and the light mode and dark mode on the subscreen. I will show that to you. So we just press the menu button. We go to utility. And then we go to touchscreen slash display. And now we have the main display brightness. I'll show that to you. Hopefully you can see. We have the main display. We can actually change the brightness of that. Hopefully you can see it. And now it's going dark. So that's really cool. And also you can. Oh, um, the sound. I'll do more about that um, on the next video. The touchscreen sound and calibration. More about that in the next video. OK, so we have the sub display. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, the sub display we have it we can have it in dark and light so dark one dark one and on dark two it's lighter hopefully you can see that and now we go to light mode and the sub screen will turn white whilst the writing of numbers will turn black Or even brighter. I don't know if the, I don't know if the um, phone screens pick that up. Okay, and now we have the button lamps. Like we have all these LEDs and the uh, registration memory buttons, uh, ass assignable buttons, and style control. Um, we can actually change the brightness of those buttons. Um, its default is two. We select one. It's the darkest. So two, three, four. There you go. Notice that the buttons on the registration and the other LED lights, they are brighter. And then we put them dark, light. And we just press these, two, we press the um, two buttons here. I'm not sure, if you, I don't think you can see it on the video, but we press the the plus and minus button simultaneously to get the default. OK, let me just um, do something quick. Uh, let's go to the I might have to change the one second. There we go. I do apologize. I have to I have to darken the picture so you can get a better image of the sub display here. So there you go, it's dark, dark two, it's a little bit lighter, light one, there you go, it changes colour, 
light to it's at its lightest okay we just put this back to, we just put those back to defaults and there you go so there you go and that is the light slash dark mode for the subscreen and also the led brightness with the registration memories the led lights here on the sliders and the knobs and everything else and the main screen brightness and darkness okay so now the next thing that i'm going to show you and that is the harmony slash arpeggiator there is a harmony slash arpeggio button uh, I, I know you can't see it on the video but yep i type i type in i type in direct access there we go I tap harmony and you get the different harmony presets and arpeggiator i will show that to you another way to do it is to gain access then um, go to the menu button and somewhere with all these different functions we go to the page one we got to find it first there we go keyboard harmony slash arpeggio we just tap that and that will give us all sorts of different arpeggiator types and harmony types i won't go through them all okay so i'm going to turn on harmony so now I'll press the style let's just turn the style down so that you can full chord and we have different um, harmony effects as well we got like um, country duet country trio uh, we've got some echo effects and using this this little icon here as the settings I think yeah you can change the speed of the echo so And tremolo. Go to the setting icon here. We can change the speed of that as well. Okay. Um, assign auto, but you can change the harmony of uh, auto, or you can change it to multi right one right two right three as well but i mainly have it set to auto and when there's like right right hand one two and three when all voices are turned on it's usually set as the main voice okay and now i'm going to show you some arpeggiators so we've got like arpeggio up and down and also depending on the, the, sp the speed of the arpeggio depends on the tempo that it's on so i'm actually going to turn the tempo down up octave now if i remember i'm just trying to find i think it might be uh voice edit controller me um there is a way that there is a arpeggio hold so that the arpeggio will continue to play but you don't have to hold down the keys let's see there we go sr2 arpeggio and we go to arpeggio hold so now i can just play a key and now it plays by itself without me holding down the keys here you go but my two hands there and um I'm not even playing the keys. I only have to play the keys if I want to change the arpeggio chord. We also have 
a quantize function for the um, arpeggio. Oh, I'll turn up the volume of the style. I think the quantize it like matches the time of the style. Like if I turn it off, say. Okay, so that's the arpeggio hold. So you can hold down, you can no, you can press a, um, the keys and then you can let go. You don't have to hold down the key to keep the arpeggiator from playing. And now let's go back to the arpeggiator, the harmony arpeggiator. Um, just one more thing that I would like to show you with the arpeggio. There's loads of, there's like loads of harmony and arpeggios um, presets to show you them all. But we have other things like we've got the mega voices. Um, more about that in a minute. We've got like EDM arpeggio. There you go. And turn it back on. Okay. I'm not going to go through like different sounds and all that. I'm just like going through some harmonies and arpeggiators. Um, okay, I am going to go to a different sound. This time I am going to go through uh, the mega voices because there are mega voice arpeggiators. Now, the arpeggiators for the mega voices are only mainly for some of the guitar sounds. Now, mega voices, um, mega voices was a sound technology that was really that was launched some over 20 years ago. Now, Mega Voices was the sound technology at the time when the original Tyros was the flagship keyboard. And Mega Voices were guitar and bass voices only. And Mega Voices could not be played live. Mega Voices were style backings, like guitar and bass sounds. You get the slide frets, the body tap, the strumming of a guitar, which gave the styles... A whole new level of realism and that was introduced in the original Tyros but now with the arpeggiator on Genos 2 and of course Genos 1 mega voices can now be played live well only some of them not all of them mainly the guitar sounds so I'll show that to you so let's see classic nylon doesn't have a arpeggio assigned to it although you can assign an arpe arpeggio on it um, sorry, I'm just going to go back to the menu. Some mega voices have arpeggio assigned to it already. This one doesn't, but that can be changed. We can go to mega guitar. There we go. Okay, enough of that. Second, um, let's go to a mega voice that already has arpeggio assigned. Okay, let's just take uh, folk guitar. There we go. There you go. This one doesn't have arpeggio assigned to it, but this one does. There's, there's different ones as well, so I'll show you. Okay, so there you go. And that is the... Harmony slash arpeggiator with many different harmony types and many different arpeggiator types ranging from piano glissandos, um, 
chord sequence, like trance, electro, EDM, up and down, for all sorts of different voices. And also, as I showed you, the uh, mega voice arpeggios as well, which makes it possible for some mega voices to be played live. And that is harmony slash arpeggio or arpeggiator. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is style control, where we have three intros, four fillings and variations, one break and three endings and um, other things we can do on style control. OK, so we press the comp to turn the comp on. So we got sync start. So as soon as I press the keys, the style will play. And sync stop so that when you play the keys, the style will play. When you let go of the keys, the style will stop. And I'm going to go through the fill-ins and variations. And then we have break. And now for the intros and endings, intro one and, en and ending one is just a simple one or two bar intro slash ending. Intro and ending two is just um, a bit more with the intro compared to the one. So intro two and ending two has more to it than intro and ending one and ending three oh, sorry intro three and ending three has well it's basically more busier than intro one intro two ending one ending two i'll show that to you so we just press intro one we've got the sync star on the keyboard waits for us to play and all you get is this And now we have intro two. And intro three. And then we press ending one. And you just get a simple ending. And now we've in ending two. And that's ending two. We can press ending three. And as soon as ending two finishes, ending three starts. So that's the style control with the intros and endings, variations, fill-ins and break. And now we have auto fill-in. So auto fill-in is currently turned on. If we turn it off, we won't get a fill-in whenever we change the variation. So I'll show that to you. Changing variations, but you won't get a fill-in. Although you will get a fill-in if you press the same button as the variation that it's on. So that's the auto fill-in. Okay, um, a couple more things with the style control. We have the OTS link, which is the one-touch setting link. Um, on the right-hand side of the keyboard, uh, we next almost next to the screen we have four one touch setting buttons which we can press 
um, I will go through the one touch settings in the next video. But for now, I'm just going to show you the OTS link. So we press OTS link. And now the voices have changed on the keyboard. Each style has full one touch settings. And whenever I change the variation, the one touch setting changes as well, as long as the OTS link is turned on. So as I change the variation, the sounds will also change as well. So here we go, I'll show that to you quick. So that's the OTS link. And also we have the tempo. Where we can turn the tempo up, we can turn the tempo down. We press the two buttons simultaneously to get the default tempo of that style you're playing. Each, each style has their own tempo. And then one more thing, we have the tap tempo. So we have to do a sort of a, a rhythm, like to keep in time or do it fast and then the keyboard will match the tempo. So I'll show that to you. So I'm gonna do it slow. Oh, oh okay, maybe not. Um, when the style is being played, the tap tempo works as a style reset, almost like a style re-trigger. But when the style isn't being played, it works as a tap tempo. So we're going to Or do it fast. Or mega fast. Or very slow. Okay. So there you have it. That is the style controls uh, with the a comp OTS link auto fill in the variations, intros and engine endings, etc. Uh, we have the tempo, uh, tap tempo. When the style's not being played, it works as a tap tempo. And when the style is being played, it acts as a style reset. There are other style controls like um, with the fingering mode, like single finger, multi finger, fingered on bass, etc. I will show that to you in the next video. So there you go. And that is just the basics of the style control. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is playlist. Now playlist was introduced in the original Genos, which replaces the Tyros music finder. Now I find music I find playlist, sorry, a, a lot better and much more convenient than music finder. I will show that to you. So with the gateway buttons, I'm just going to tap, press playlist. And that calls up the playlist. And this is the, that's just a preset playlist. Now with playlist, you can have 2,500 titles or registrations on playlist and then once you exceed that 2500 registrations you can create another playlist and have another 2500 etc with music finder on tyros you can only have have up to 2500 records on the music finder so i'll go through with you on playlist now before we go do the playlist, we better save the registrations on the registration bank. But um, let me show you, because if I go ahead and did, uh, it's on a USB, USB, uh, playlist for Genos 2. Um, and let's say, let's go for uh, country, for instance. And we just tap that, Genos 2, playlist, country. Okay, 
So we just tap this and load. We can load it. We can load it. That's not a problem. But if I disconnect the USB stick, okay, I've disconnected the USB stick. Oh, play this. I go to I go to load the playlist. It says failed to access data, which isn't a problem because the best way to do it is to save the playlists on the user section of the keyboard. Unless you know you're gonna have the USB stick in your keyboard at all times. So what I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do that right now. Let's go to the registration bank here. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and we're going to copy the files over. This one, playlist for Genos 2. Now you can download the playlist for Genos 2 on the Yamaha website, when you register your Genos 2 online, then you've got the playlist for Genos 2 accessible for you, as well as a lot of free expansion packs and other downloads. We go to copy here. Okay, so now that the playlist for Genos 2 has been saved on the user section of Genos 2, I can now take the USB stick out and now in order to save a playlist okay let's just go to playlist um let's go to new a new playlist will be created so everything on here will be erased we go to continue and that makes us room for a, a new playlist so I'm just going to do a couple of categories just to show an example uh, go to expansion. Oh, sorry. Preset. No. Oh, no, because I need to add records, don't I? Yes, add record. Select from registration bank. Uh, go to playlist. And we're going to go to country, for instance. We're going to select all. Add to playlist. And there you go. And that's all the um, playlist registrations in the country category there's loads let's go right up okay we can then load them yeah and now to save the playlist we go to new playlist yeah file save we're actually going to save this playlist uh, we're going to save it as Whatever, ca whatever category it was, which was country. So, oops, I spelt it wrong. I do apologize. There we go, country. Okay, and now that's our playlist saved. And that's, I'll do a, a couple more examples. We go to exit and we want to create a new playlist. I will do exactly the same as before, add record, select from registration bank, except this time I'm going to go to the dance category, select all, but you don't have to select all of them, you can select whichever ones you want, but I choose select all, and then go to add to playlist. Okay, so that's all of the, the um, registrations in the dance category via the playlist. And now we're going to save that playlist. We go to File, Save, Save here, and we're going to call it whatever the category is, which is, of course, Dance. OK, but you can also add your own registrations to Playlist. So I will show that to you. I'm going to go back, I'm going to go back to Playlist. I'm going to go select New, Continue. And now I, I have learned some songs on Genos 2. So, and I, I've made registrations for them as well. So what I'm going to do is go to add record, select from registration bank. I'm going to select my own registrations. There we go. 
hopefully you can see the song titles in there. Those are the um, songs that I've learned so far. There will be many songs that I'm going to learn on Genus 2. I can think of many songs that I want to learn. Which kind of um, scrambles my brain a bit sometimes when I'm focusing on so many songs at the same time. I know I'd, I suggest myself to just focus on one song at a time. Which is what I've been doing so far. But in the past, I have been thinking of all sorts of different songs. Which scrambles my brain. <laughs> so the best... The best solution is just to think of one song at a time whenever you want to learn a song. OK, so that's all the um, the songs here. My registrations of songs that I've learnt. Um, we're going to save that. Go to File, Save, Save here. And I am going to call this. I'm just going to call this, call this my playlist. My playlist, because it's got my registrations on. OK, so that, that's um the playlist and how to save a playlist and add registrations to a playlist. Now, for each of these playlists, you can have a total of 2,500 reg registrations. When one, when, when one playlist is full up of the 2,500 different playlist registrations, you can make a new playlist and add another 2,500. So the possibilities are endless with playlist. It was very limited for Music Finder. OK, last thing that I'm going to show you with playlist. So I'm just going to put my USB stick back in. Some people that have previously owned Tyros keyboards I know that some people may prefer Music Finder. See, I know some people that do prefer Music Finder as opposed to Playlist on Genos. But you can convert Music Finder from Tyros to Genos Playlist. I will show that to you. So, for, um, for instance, go to Playlist. Uh, we're going to go to New. And what I've done is that I have... Oh, sorry, wrong one. Add record. US. Oh, hang on. I did. I did have it up um, before. There we go. Go to new playlist. Tap that, and notice music finder Tyros Five. Music finder from the Tyros Four, Tyros Three, and Tyros Two will also work as well. But I don't think the Tyros One music finder will work. So we just tap this Music Finder Tyros 5 and it says the selected Music Finder file will be converted to a playlist file. Continue. Yes. But since it's converting, this might take longer. This will take a bit longer than usual to convert. Because it's converting everything from the Tyros 5 Music Finder into separate registrations as a playlist. So people can still enjoy their Tyros Music Finder on Genus 1, Genus 2, or the Music Finder from like the PSR S970 on the SX900 and SX700 as a playlist. What it's doing, it's converting all of the song titles So yes, for this instance, I'm just going to show you the Tyros 5 Music Finder conversion to playlist. Even though Tyros 4, 3, 2 and Music Finder will also work with Genos 2. But when I, when I tried it on the Genos 1, years ago, that's about nearly six years ago, this, that's when I found out that Tyros 1 Music Finder can't be converted Yes, it just needs some time. It's converting. I'm now just going to wait for it to, uh, to finish converting.
Okay, so that's now finished converting. Um, it took longer than I thought. <laughs> so from the point on my, from the point on I stopped talking and waiting for the conversion to finish, I did speed that part of the video up a bit so that it's not as long as it was in real time. <laughs> so that part of the video has been sped up. Okay, so the music finder file has been converted to a playlist file. To use it in the same way as the music finder, make sure to turn on the one touch setting link button. Okay, but we I don't think I'll do that. Okay, so that's the Tyros 5 playlist. And let me just show you. And there we go. We've got all the song titles. We've got all the song titles here. Just as it would on the... Um, Tyros 5 or any other Tyros keyboard. Let's see. What if I take the USB stick out? Will these will these um still be able to be loaded? So I'm just gonna select that one. Or select that one. Yep, yeah, they still work because um, I don't think they are they saved on registrations. Ah, that's why, because it's automatically converted them as well. So so there we go. Tyros 5. It, it's a good thing. It automatically creates a registration um, folder for you. Tyros 5. And we've got all of the registrations in the Tyros 5 folder here. As they have been converted into a playlist so yeah it's really good how it can do that right so there you go and that is playlist in which you can download the playlist files from the Yamaha website when you register your Genos 2 online or you can create your own playlist with your own registrations or you can convert the Tyros music finder key the Tyros keyboards music finder um, into playlist as you sh as you as I did here I've converted the Tyros 5 music finder into playlist Tyros 4 Tyros 3 and Tyros 2 music finder um, they will work as well being converted as a playlist for Genos 2 and also Genos 1 and that is playlist okay so now the next thing that I am going to show you and that is turning channel parts on and off with a, a style or a MIDI song. So I'll show that to you. So we just simply go to this here down there. We have the channel icon and this will give us um, the menu for we've got this, the style parts here down the bottom. And we have the song parts here on top, but we don't have a song loaded. So I'm just going to do the style the style parts for this example so I'm just going to turn the style on and we can turn parts on and off Okay, so that's turning parts on and off with a style. The same thing applies to the songs if we have a MIDI file loaded up. And another thing, um, as well as the channel parts on and off, we can do um, revoicing as well. Um, just a quick pointer that just like on the Genos 1, you couldn't get access to the GM and XG voices and GM2 voices if you were to play them as a um, standard voice. But you can get access to them when you are turn and, and revoicing style parts and song parts. So I will show that to you. So this one for instance. So yeah, this is um, revoicing.
there you go, you've got the GM and XG and GM2. In which, let me show you real quick, if you was to select a sound, the GM and XG and GM2 voices are not visible. Just a pointer. So, yeah, I will be showing all the sounds of Genus 2, but I won't be showing the GM and XG and GM2 voices. But all the other sounds, yes. So, GM and XG. And then we have GM2, um, yep, GM2, which is basically like the same. Almost the same as XG, but we've got some different stuff. Okay, so that's the revoicing. The same thing applies to the songs, like you can turn parts on and off of the songs and revoice those as well. Yep, GM and XG. Yeah, OK, so very simple stuff. And now in order to get the default sound of that part of the style, we just hold down the icon. So which one did I change? This one. We need to hold down the image icon. And it takes us back to the default sound. Another thing, if you want to have that part as a solo, we just hold down the channel parts here on and off. So I'll show it to you. Hold that down. And that just plays by itself. Or maybe the bass or phrase, shall we say. Or chord. And we just press that one again to get them all playing again. So there you go. And that is the channel parts on and off, which also applies to the songs as well. And turning parts on and off for the style, revoicing styles as well. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is voice guide now voice guide is a really useful thing to have on genos 2 for blind and visually impaired people now what you've got to do is download the voice guide file for genos 2 on the yamaha website and put it on a usb stick and the usb stick has to be in the keyboard at all times in order for it to work so at the moment, I don't have a USB stick in the Genos. Notice that there's no voice guide. And now, here we have the um, USB stick here. There we go. Yep, USB stick, um, which I have downloaded the voice guide file onto it. And now I'm going to insert it into the keyboard. OK, so now that it's connected, the voice guide will now work. Write one voice. Which will do a voice guide for every action you do on the Genos. Such as changing categories of sounds and styles and changing sounds and styles. CFX stage brand. CFX ballad page 5. Page 4. Page 3. Page 2. Page 1. You one upright. Rock brand. Page two. CFX cocktail. Page four. Page three. Piano one DX seven. Piano two DX seven. Let's do some more categories. Electric piano. Clubby funk joystick. Clubby one DX seven. Organ. Diapason. Leaglet geduct. Concert organ to T. 
Page 1. Jazz rotary joystick. Wider bars joystick. Accordion. Vagin accordion. Harmonica. Woodwind. Alto sax. Pad. 80s pop strings. Home. And I'll go through some styles. Style. Pop. Th rock. Pop. Throwback pop. Dance hall pop. Page 2. 90s Euro Reggae. Retro Pop. 80s Dance Pop. 80s Chintzy Pop. 80s Platinum Ballad. Page 2. Page 5. Next page. Page 7. 80s Ska. 80s US City Pop. Dance. Folktronica. 90s House Dance. Jump Dance. Movie and Show. So that's just the, the voice guide guiding you to which categories of sounds and styles you are selecting. Epic Drama Ballad, page 3. 80s All-Time Pop. Home. But also, um, it's not just for sounds and styles, but for everything else. Songs. Song A. Mid MIDI. Aud audio. Home. Oh, registration. Registration Bank. Loading. Loading, 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 home. The voice guide also works for um, the, the menus as well. So I'm going to go to the menu. Menu one, menu two, utility, touch screen, display, storage, system, factory reset, backup. Menu two. And also, no, and also, the, the direct access button doesn't work when you're on voice guide. But I think there is a way out. Uh, Utility. I think there is a way. Factory reset. Touch screen. Display. Menu two. Let's see if we can. Um, let's see. Voice guide. Utility. Touch screen. Display. F factory reset. System. Voice guide. Voice guide controller, the direct access to see. Voice guide controller, foot, foot pedal uh, two. Operating a button or controller jumps to the relevant display of the respective control. Touching panel reset calls up the function to reset various settings of the instrument without rebooting. So now that I've selected something different, direct access now works. System. Operating a button or controller jumps panel reset system. Do you want to execute panel reset? This is convenient for restoring sound when there is no sound even with cancel system voice guide controller. Voice guide controller home. Okay, so there you go. And that is voice guide, which is very useful for those that are blind or visually impaired that um, there's a voice guide for every action you make on Genos 2 also works there's also a voice guide file for the Genos 1 the PSR SX700 and the SX900 and with Genos 2 as well which is very handy like I said for those that are blind or visually impaired and that is voice guide. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is transpose slash octave slash tuning. Now on the part where I showed the style control, um, hopefully you've noticed the transpose buttons and the octave buttons there. So I'll show it to you. So here we have the transpose. Hopefully, on hopefully you can see on the screen, but the top bit here, this bit here, as I change the transpose, that changes as well, because that's the um, transpose, and this icon here shows the octave. 
hopefully you can see on the screen. So here's the octave. And now for tuning, we have to go to the menu for that part. So we just go to menu and here we go. We go to master tune. And this is where we can change the keyboard's tuning. We can either do it via touchscreen or we can do it via the dialer wheel here. So let me just... Um... So that's the tuning. And now go um, now, now for the, the transpose we go to transpose we can select master keyboard and song so the master it transposes everything hopefully you can see that but if we select keyboard only the keyboard transposes and when we select song the song will be transposed and not the actual keyboard in itself. There is, um, if I go to the voice menu, I won't, I won't show it on this video. I will show it in the next video. We've got more options for octave for the left hand and right hand one, two and three. But more about that in the next video. So there you go, and that is transpose slash octave slash tuning. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is the touch sensitivity slash aftertouch. Now notice that the Genos, uh, Genos 2 as well, it doesn't have a button to turn the touch sensitivity on and off. So yes, it's, it's currently set to on. Uh, we go to the menu again, and this time we will select on the menu, and we find the right one. Menu one, I think it's menu one. Um, we gotta, gotta find it, one second. I will find it eventually. I think it's keyboard. Oh, there we go. We type, we tap in keyboard on the menu. Hope you can see that keyboard. And this is where we can change the touch sensitivity on all parts and after touch. So first of all, the touch sensitivity, they're all ticked onto on. So touch sensitivity is on. And now I'm going to untick right one which is currently the piano voice that I've selected. And now the touch sensitivity is off. So it doesn't matter how soft or hard I play the keys. It will be fixed velocity. And now I'm going to turn right two and right three on. So they're all on. So notice that right two and right three touch sensitivity is on whilst right is turned off. Now let's do it the other way around. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to turn these two off. So it all applies for each part, left, right one, right two and right three. Uh, let me just turn these voices off so we're back to piano. And then we have like fixed velocity and um, we can, so if it's set to one. Hmm, okay, I'm not sure how that is, um, but the touch curve, the touch curve, we have all uh, different touch sensitivity sort of things. Like if we have easy, 
then you don't have to press the key so hard for the full velocity. But if it's set to hard two, you need to press the keys a bit harder to get the full velocity. Go to easy one. You don't have to press the keys that hard. It's currently set to normal. Okay, so that's the touch sensitivity. And now we move on to aftertouch. Um, okay, so not all sounds would have that the aftertouch. It's mainly for woodwind and synth sounds. So let's just show you some um, aftertouch. Um, I think some guitars have it. There we go. Notice that if I when I press the keys harder, I'll get that sort of as if I'm using a modulation wheel. Though I'm not using a modulation wheel. And let's uh, try another. Um, how about some brass sounds? Or how about this one? See, not all sounds would have an aftertouch. Let's try some synth sounds. I am going to go through some of these sounds for aftertouch. So bear with me while I find the sound. How about Brass 1 DX7? There we go. So when I, pre I press the key, but when I press the key a bit harder, I press it down harder, you get that aftertouch effect. So let's go back to the menu, keyboard, and it's current, the, the aftertouch is currently on. So let's see, touch curve, it's set to medium. Okay, so. It's now on aftertouch. Aftertouch is currently on, but now I turn it off. It doesn't matter if I hold, if I press down the key harder. I don't get the aftertouch effect. The same thing applies to right two and right three. Like some sounds are pretty selective when it comes to aftertouch. Some of them you can hardly notice and some of them you can really notice. So let's go to touch curve. Let's go to soft. I think what that means is that I don't have to hold down the key that hard for the aftertouch to take effect. So here we go. See, I'm not holding, I'm not pressing down the key too hard. And now medium, which is the default. You have to hold, you have to press down the key a little bit harder than if the touch curve was soft. And now hard. When, when the touch curve is set to hard, we have to hold down the key a little bit harder to get the aftertouch effect. So now I'm going to do the aftertouch. Okay, so that's after touch. I'm going to put that back to normal and there we go. So there you have it. And that is touch sensitivity slash after touch. With the touch sensitivity, um, you can turn the sensitivity on or off. Um, if it's set to off, it to be fixed velocity. It doesn't matter how hard or soft you play the keys. And when touch sensitivity is set to on, the, the, the um, sound is soft when you play the keys soft and it's loud when you play the keys hard. So soft, hard. And after touch is when you pr play a key and you press down the key harder to get the after touch effect. And that is touch sensitivity slash after touch. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is metronome slash tap tempo. And I know I've already showed the tap tempo with the style control, but there's more to it. 
So I will show that to you. So we go to the menu. Go to metronome. And this is where we can have the metronome. Oh, let's just turn the tempo down. Okay, so now that the metronome is turned on, it will keep doing that. But there's also a bell sound. We can turn that on. We also have time signature for the metronome, in which we can change, like a two beat. Oh. Or a three beat, like, like a waltz beat. Or a six eight beat. If he was playing a six eight style. But these can also be changed individually as well. So I'll show that to you. Okay, so. So it makes it slower. Let's put it back to normal. So this, the top here, changes the beat. So a five beat or a six beat. So after eight, after eight of those, you get the bell sound. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's put that back to normal. And the bottom, it basically cuts the tempo in half. And then we go to eight, it's faster. Go to 16, it's even faster. Okay, let's just put that back to default. And turn it off. Oh, we can turn the metronome volume down as well. So that's the metronome. Very simple. And now we have the tap tempo. As I showed already, the tap tempo with the style. Uh, the tap tempo, when the style is being played, will act as a style reset style selection reset but i think if i was to turn it let's try it so it resets the style but if i turn it off i wonder if yeah when that's set to off it doesn't act as a style reset it will act as a tap um, a tap tempo We put it back to normal and it will act as a style reset. So very simple stuff. And now with the tap tempo, you get the sound whenever you press the button. We can turn it up, the volume. Uh, let's just do that. There we go. There's me pressing the tap tempo button. But you can also change the sound of that. So now I'm pressing the tap tempo, I'm getting this. Or I can get, say, hi-hat open. Or how about a crash symbol, if I can find one. There we go. Let's just turn that back to default volume. Let's show some more examples of the sounds. Um, let me just... A go-go. That's too slow. So yeah, very simple stuff. So that's the tap tempo. And you can also have like all sorts of different sounds when pressing the tap tempo button, how about shaker? Okay, let's just put that back to default. And there you go, 
and that is the metronome slash tap tempo in which we can change the metronome's um, time signature and we can change the tap tempo's sound when we press the tap tempo button and change the volume of that as well. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is Bluetooth connectivity. Now, um, Bluetooth was introduced in the, when it comes to home keyboards, it, it was introduced in the PSR SX900 and has now made its way to Genos 2. So I will show that to you. Okay, so I currently got my iPad here. I've got my iPad there. Um, so what I'm going to do with the iPad, let me just, um, there you go, you can see the screen, the iPad screen better now. Um, I'm going to um, go to Bluetooth, if we can find it on here. There you go, Bluetooth, make sure Bluetooth is turned on. And it comes up saying my devices. And now on the Genos 2. We need to go to menu, select Bluetooth, and hopefully that should come up on my iPad. Pairing. Let's see. Type of tapping pa pairing. There we go. It has now come up on my iPad as Genos 2. And now they're going to pair together. other devices there we go i think it maybe it's best we tap that there we go tap that on the ipad and there we go it is now connected so now the bluetooth of my ipad and genus 2 are paired so i can play like music or videos on my ipad and it will play back on the genus 2 speakers as if it were a wireless auxiliary output uh, I can like watch videos on YouTube and um, listen to music on Spotify. And it will come up on the Genos speakers. So I've already got what I want up on. Um, oh, no, not YouTube studio. Um, YouTube, that's it. There we go. Um, let me just, um, I know there's, I know there's adverts on. The, let me just turn the volume up. One sec. We get Don't adverts as well, so um, now that that's connected. Let me just full screen that. So whoever's playing the guitar, the sound is coming from the Genos speakers and not the iPad. Okay, let's just do another example. Um, how about we watch a video of somebody playing drums? So I'm just gonna type that in on my iPad. Drum playing, for instance. And I am going to find a video of somebody playing the drums. So bear with me while I try and find a video. How to play drums, your very first drum lesson. Let's just take that one. Hey everyone, it's Jared here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to get started on the drums. And three and that. Okay, so you see a little exit with your lead. Three and four. So right. now we've... There we go. So there you go. And that is Bluetooth connectivity in which we can watch videos on YouTube and the sounds will come out on the Geno speakers 
or listen to music on Spotify. It doesn't just have to be iPad. It can also be like with Android, um, iPhone or any Bluetooth device, even Bluetooth speakers, as far as I know. Um, it's really handy for you know Bluetooth connectivity because when I play my Genos 2 um, with headphones and there's certain songs that I want to learn, um, I just connect my phone or iPad via Bluetooth and listen to songs that I like to learn. That is exactly what I did within the PSR SX900 as well. So it's a very useful feature, Bluetooth connectivity. So there you go. And that is Bluetooth connectivity to connect your iPad, iPhone, or any other device to the Genos 2 and pair them. Okay, so now the last thing that I am going to be showing you in part one of the tutorial of the Yamaha Genos 2 keyboard, showing all of the basic stuff of Genos 2, and that is HDMI output, in which the Genos 2 has a HDMI output so that you can connect a TV onto the keyboard. Just like um, back when the, when it was the Tyros 2, it had an RGB output in which you can connect a PC monitor to it, which will also which will act as an optional screen. And plus, it will be bigger as well. So I will show that to you. So first of all, I've got myself the um, my the HDMI output, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it at the back of the keyboard. So bear with me whilst I do that. I'm gonna it's at the back here, on the left hand side of the keyboard. Okay, that's in. And now I'm gonna to go to my TV, and I will show you. So one moment. Okay, so now that I've got my TV turned on, I'm going to select the um, HDMI. I've got four ports on this telly. HDMI, I know that I selected it as, as HDMI 1, so I'm going to select that. And now, there we go. There's the Genos 2 screen on the telly. Let me just um, alter that. Sorry, bear with me a second. Oh. There you go. That's good enough. And now we have the Genos 2 screen on a TV. Now using the Genos 2, I've got it right here, down right here. I can select sounds, say. Different categories of sounds or different categories of styles. So as well as the keyboard screen, I also got the screen on my telly. That's connected to Genos 2. We can also do menus as well. So it's all there. You can look at the telly or you can look at the keyboard. It's entirely up to you. And HDMI, it's much more easier than the previous methods that you can connect a, a bigger screen onto the keyboard like the Tyros 2 and Tyros 3 and so on, had the um, RGB out in which you could connect a PC monitor to the keyboard. And now we have HDMI on Genos 2. I know that the HDMI was also on the Korg PA5X, but I've, I've never tried the HDMI on that, just Genos 2. And it's so much more convenient than other methods in the past. So there you go. And that is the HDMI in which you can connect the Genos 2 to a TV. So you've got the screen. Let me just show you real quick. You've got the screen here on the keyboard and we have this screen here on um, the TV. OK, so this is now the end of part one of the tutorial of the Yamaha Genos 2 keyboard where I've showed some of the basic functions and capabilities. I do hope you have enjoyed this tutorial video and that you have found it useful. So please do write back to me 
and tell me what you think. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next video in which will be part two of the Genos 2 tutorial in which I'll be showing you more in-depth stuff such as registration memories, assignable buttons and assignable functions etc and similar functions. Thank you.